Hiking and nature photography are two of my favorite things in the world to do, but combining these two passions put me in a really bad situation last year. It was a solo backpacking trip in the High Uintas in Utah. Now the video from this trip never made it to YouTube. I ended up with a bit of altitude sickness and an injury that had me limping out about 10 miles out of the backcountry. Now I pushed past my physical limits on the trip, carrying all of my camera gear in hopes of getting some wildlife images as well as some landscapes. Physical and mental limits are a funny thing. They can be moved. And instead of letting that experience ruin my love of hiking and photography, I decided to start a little bit slower. Back to basics. No tripod, no heavy telephoto lenses, no big camera bags. Just a camera and a small lens, some water, and of course, a few snacks. My goal? To work my way up to being ready both physically and mentally to do that backpacking trip again in the future. To know my limits, and to push past them. Those were some big cat tracks here. Superstition Mountains, we just, there's a healthy, healthy population of mountain lions. And <laughs> as I was taking my last photo there, here, Chris, Mike, <laughs> and she didn't want to go any further without me because those giant cat tracks and they're going the direction we're going here, walking down our trail. So apparently they're on a hike as well this morning or last night maybe, but yeah, that was a big track. Five miles is a nice starting point. It's a little bit of elevation gain and maybe even getting a photo. I've never really been great at shooting without a tripod. I feel like I'm always rushed and the photos, they usually feel like snapshots to me. It's definitely something I need to improve on. All right, distance check. We're about 1.9 miles into the hike. I know Chris has left me behind. Stopped to go to the bathroom. She's just gone. Oh yeah, she's got candy. So what do you got there? I got the 10X. So Chris just got back from Scotland from two weeks with her mom and she brought back British treats. Ah, thank you. Also one of my favorite trail foods, Cliff Bar white chocolate macadamia nut. That's the key right there. That's the flavor that's the best. Now my number one, of course, is anything Swiss chocolate. That's like the number one, but let me know what you guys eat on the trail. What's your favorite trail food? All right, on we go. And as you guys will notice in this video, my fight with DJI and the audio is a never ending battle. Well, we're at about the halfway point of the trail and see behind me there, some darkness coming in there. It is supposed to rain today, but not till later, but it doesn't look, <laughs> it looks very ominous that way and it's coming this way. So we better, better get going. Got a little bit of sun peeking through from the east. Storms coming from the west, which is sometimes a good combination. Maybe we'll get lucky and get some light and maybe actually get a photo that might actually look nice. Trying to find balance with hiking and photography is always a struggle. Sometimes the photography takes away from the joy of hiking. I stress about getting a photo too much. And other times, hiking takes away the joy of photography. When I'm exhausted, both physically and mentally, it's extremely hard for me to find the energy to still be creative. Finding that balance is so important in finding the joy in both activities. Now for this first short hike, I really enjoyed just carrying around minimal gear and focused more on the experience of the hike. I did manage a few photos that I think are okay for being handheld, but again, the emphasis was on the hike and the experience itself. For hike number two, I wanted to reintroduce the camera gear. I didn't want to increase the weight and the hiking difficulty in the distance just yet, so we chose another five mile hike, but this time I brought all of my lenses and my tripods. Look at that, we have a baby tarantula here. That's crazy, that's the first time I've ever seen that. So a first for me and Chris in Arizona is a baby tarantula. This is the smallest tarantula I've ever seen. It's about the size of a large female black widow. Super, super small in, in terms of tarantulas go. Oh, it is so cool looking though. 
Maybe like your thumb? Yeah, yeah, maybe about the size of my, my thumb. That's about how big it is. That's, that's a little guy. Come on, you little guy. Now we started this hike a little bit late. We had a five mile loop and only about three hours or so until sunset, or so I thought. All right, halfway point check. We have about an hour and a half until sunset. 2.5 miles to go on the hike. And yeah, make it down back to the truck hopefully just in time. Ready? And now our second wildlife of the day. A millipede. It's about four inches long or so. It's not the bad one. The centipede is the, the gnarly one. It's super fast and poisonous and ugly. So yeah, it's about the size right there. Very slow, so Chris isn't worried too much about any kind of creepiness. All right, found a little photo as we're walking here. These beautiful choyas are being backlit. Essentially what I'm doing is just taking a portrait of one of the choyas that stand out to me. It's got a little fork on it. Looks really nice and the background is dark. So the background's in shade, but this thing is being lit up. Oh, the Choya's backlit looks so nice. I am all the way out at about 330, 320 millimeters. Two second timer, bam. Now that photo was right at around three miles into this five mile hike. I was happy that I brought that heavy telephoto lens at this point. I was able to get a shot that I would have never been able to get with a wide angle or even a 24 to 70 lens. But would I have enjoyed this photo as much if it was eight miles into a hike or 10 miles into a hike? That's what this challenge is all about limits. What are my limits where I'm no longer enjoying the photo taking process? And can those physical and mental limits be increased? All right, I'm gonna spare you the bad audio. But here, I was so happy that I had brought the telephoto lens for that shot. And as we were hiking the last quarter of the loop, I looked back and I saw that it was almost a full moon. So once again, the telephoto lens shined. It was also at this point, we realized that my photo pills app that told me what time the sunset was, was either on a different date or a different location because the sun was setting and we were still a good hour from the trailhead. Every image I took was with the telephoto lens on this hike, which surprised me. At the end of the hike, I was definitely a bit more tired than the previous hike without all my camera gear, but I loved the photos a lot more. So now it was time to take another step up. It was time to increase the distance really test our limits. So I left the heavy telephoto lens at home and I brought just my 24 to 70 F4. Now this hike was over twice the distance of our last one, but there was almost no elevation gain. So that is why we are here. The beautiful Oregon pipe, the only place in the US where Oregon Pipe grows is right here, Oregon Pipe National Monument. Also we have the Sunita cactus, which is also the only place where uh, this cactus grows as well. So hopefully we'll see a couple of those. Oh, all right, we're getting up at 3.30 in the morning for. So I got to admit that this hike so far has been surprisingly beautiful. I didn't read a lot about this, there's not a lot of information. There's nobody out here because we're about five miles from the Mexico border. And it's uh, you know, a two and a half hour drive or so from the Phoenix area. Uh, just, just long enough we can get out here for sunrise, a uh, nice day trip. And it's just mind-blowingly beautiful out here with so many Oregon pipes. Oh man, awesome. All right, I had to stop real quick for this absolute beauty of a shot. We have a giant, giant uh, Oregon pipe cactus with a choya right here in the foreground, focus stacking. And uh, yeah, I got my 24 to 70. That's all I brought with me because it's a longer hike. But the 24 millimeters is working out pretty good, I think. And yeah, I got the nice blue skies with that good texture in the clouds. We got the nice light. It's still pretty soft getting through some of these clouds. So it's diffusing that harsh light a little bit and just absolutely beautiful. I ended up going with a photo without the choya in the foreground, and I felt that it made a nice black and white image. All right, one hour in, 2.5 miles, and 
It is time for second breakfast. You guys know how much we love that. And we've got blueberry muffins. Chocolate muffin? Blueberry? Blueberry. Blueberry muffins. So as we were sitting down for a little break eating some sandwiches, uh, Coyote came up about 50 yards and just kind of stared at us. Had a real reddish tint to him. Looked really cool. And uh, it's the four-legged coyote, not the two-legged coyotes we get here on the border as well. It's, it's the four-legged one, the furry one. Now these organ pipes, when they die, this here is the skeleton and it looks and it feels like wood, which is crazy. And you get that inside of like Choya cactus too and some of these other ones, Saguaros. But these, uh, these organ pipe cactus, it's like you can rub your hand on it and not get, you know, stickers. They just, they all disappear. It's like smooth, almost wooden like texture to it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it looks like Chris found a mine shaft. That's what we want to do out in the middle of nowhere with no help to go and with no help near. Let's go discover a mine shaft. All right, we push on. And this is the remnants of the two-legged coyotes. This is two-legged coyote droppings, do we call it? Yep, it is unfortunate. And there's signs all over the place, illegal smuggling of people and other stuff, I'm sure, too. So. so I'm not sure if you guys can see, but right there is the border. That is the wall <laughs> uh, to Mexico. Break time, time for a little checkup. We are 6.3 miles in. According to all trails, this is a 12 mile hike, but looking at some of the other reviews, it's who knows if it's actually 12 miles. Some people are saying it's 10. It is getting warm out here. We're in the shade, taking a break, eating some sandwiches, drinking lots of water, but it is getting pretty hot. So we're gonna try and take that shortcut, maybe shorten down to 10 miles. Whew. Yeah. Starting to feel it now. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick the difference. So this is the Sanita cactus here. You can see how it has the fuzzy, fuzzy things on there. And then that over there is the organ pipe. So you can see there's a difference. And according to Chris, there's only about 150 of these Sanita cactus in the entire park. Isn't that right, Park Ranger Chris? That is correct. <laughs> All right, last check-in. We are under a mile to the truck and I am beat. How you doing? So far, so good. So far, so good, she says. Oh man, my legs are done. So it's gonna be a little over 11 miles total. But the real reason why we do these hikes is to see how many calories we burned, to see what size pizza we can order. I was pretty exhausted after this hike officially 12 miles and had stopped taking photos at around the three mile mark into the hike. Now part of that was because the light got a bit too harsh. I was also finding that getting my b-roll and filming got lazier and lazier after about mile eight. So I was discovering a happy medium between getting some photos but also putting the camera away and just enjoying the hike. I was tired but I wasn't completely miserable. Now for this last hike, it was time to up the stakes again. About the same distance as the last hike, but now I was bringing my telephoto lens, my wide angle lens, and my 24 to 70, as well as my hiking tripod. Right, our goal for today is to go around that glorious mountain right there, 10 miles. So I have the All Trails Pro membership, it's like 30 bucks a year. It's so nice to be able to download the maps offline so it keeps you right on the trail but one of my biggest frustrations is like the mileage that it gives you on the trails is so inaccurate like every single hike we go on it's like 15 to 20 percent different like this trail here is supposed to be like eight miles but i'm looking at the reviews and it's like nine nine point nine ten miles and that's been like every hike we've done so far if it says 10 miles, it'll be more like 11 or 12. They're keeping you on the trail and finding the trail if it's like, you know, the other hike when we were in the dark. Man, it was perfect. So we were originally gonna do this hike this morning, 
But Chris looked last night at the weather app and it was below freezing in the morning. We're like, nope. So now we started at 1 p.m. is when we started the hike or ish. And uh, I think it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just about perfect hiking weather. There's no clouds in the sky. So the sun is beating down a little bit, makes it warm at times. Uh, Arizona winter time is perfect time to go hiking. Everybody gets out from having that 100 degree, 100 degree weather for four or five months and we are ready to hike. Although we've only seen two other people so far on this hike. You know, these, uh, these lesser known hikes are so nice because of that. On my non-hiking days, I would be doing other types of cardio in the gym to really push my physical limits. And I think this hike was the perfect test to see how my conditioning had improved since the beginning. And over that muffin. <laughs> As we reached the midway point in the hike, I really felt like I was handling everything with a lot more comfort and ease. Now I hadn't taken any photos yet, but that was all about to change. Got a uh, nice little scene here. You got the 24 millimeter on. Have this beautiful little bush with some blooming yellow flowers on it. It looks really nice, nice little foreground. And then water and all this texture in these rocks here. In the mid ground, we have some beautiful saguaro cacti, light coming in from the side. And then we got Picket Post Mountain in the background. Not a bad scene at all. A little too early in the day. I mean, the light is still kind of harsh, but I, I don't care. I really like the photo a lot. What a beautiful place. And yes, okay, okay, okay. We have to come clean here. Chris found it. She stopped and she looked at it, but she didn't have her camera. So technically she can't claim it if she doesn't have her camera, but she did find the composition and uh, I'm literally just stealing it. So we were walking and Chris saw some like bird poop on the ground and she goes, oh, that's probably an owl and kept walking. I look up and it's a long-eared owl looking right down at us. I'm so happy I brought my 100 to 400. This is the first one I've ever seen. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful bird. Man, this does not feel like the desert. A lot of fall colors in here actually, or some, not, not a lot. But uh, is it weird that that owl is the highlight of this hike so far? I get so excited seeing stuff like that. Oh, so cool. Well, Chris is picking up the pace. We are <laughs> gonna do another photo finish. We were trying to time it right to be done with the hike right at sunset, but because I like to stop and take photos, and sit there and watch owls. Uh, we're running behind a little bit, so now Chris has kicked it up into the next gear. And we are hurrying <laughs> because, uh, like I said, we might be a little late again walking in the dark. We don't want to because it's hard to navigate down here as it is in this wash trying to find the trail. And, you know, this is daytime, so doing it in the dark is going to be even harder. You can tell by how wide they're spread. You can even see the claws. You see that right here? Oh, yeah. Because it's so muddy. Mm hmm. Yep, and then over there, you have the dogs. So that's a coyote over here. Or just a dog. It's yeah, or just, it could be a dog too. Yeah. It could be like a hiking dog, but. Oh. Beautiful light. We took a little bit of a shortcut, cut off about 0.2 miles of our hike. All right, hey, see the truck down there? Oh man, 
It is nice. My photography has always been based on the experience first. That's the most important part of my creative process. The photo, it comes later with having a vision or finding interesting subjects to explore and then blending that vision with my experience. Pushing my limits has really helped me enjoy both the photography and the hiking. And finding the balance between the two is so important. But sometimes it's okay just to leave the camera gear at home and just enjoy the hike. <laughs>